existing level of knowing on public rights of way and medians. And thanks to years of responsible planning by the Tulsa Metropolitan Utility Authority and votes by this council to set rates that cover the cost of service, there will be no rate increase for water service in the coming year. We have also significantly reduced the sewer and stormwater rate increases that were adopted in the FY21 plan. The lack of any increase in water rates is a welcome reminder of where we can be after years of paying down debt and catching up with the cost of service delivery. One footnote I want to add as you review the budget regards an accounting change implemented this year which can cause some of the year-to-year -year numbers to look like dramatic increases when in fact they're not. Both FY21 and FY22 reflect a cost allocation count accounting change, which moves departments with allocated budgets and separate funds to one fund, the general fund. Those departments will have combined funding in one place to make it easier for departmental personnel to manage their budgets and to improve the purchasing process. Services provided to operations outside the general fund will be charged for services received. The impact from the changes adds approximately $30 million to both revenues and expenditures in FY21 and 22. And it explains why the general fund budget and resources appear to increase when actually a decline is projected. This will allow departments to charge their expenditures to a single fund single reimbursement from enterprise funds instead of requiring to do that with every single expenditure as they've historically had to do. In closing, I'm reminded of the admonition I frequently receive from my city council colleague, David Patrick. The budget is a planning document, not something chiseled in stone. You plan as best you can with the information you have available at the time and if you need to adjust as the year goes along, you have an amendment process to do that. The current mix of economic crises is unprecedented for our city. We do not have an easy roadmap to follow. So the best way to proceed is with caution, day by day. This budget reflects our best projection for the year ahead, but I will work with the nine of you throughout the year to adjust it as we see fit to continue serving the citizens of Tulsa the best of our ability. And while we're in a changing time, it is important to remember that we're only a few months removed from announcing the largest economic development investment in city history. The two largest new employers in the history of our city are building campuses in Tulsa. And that the private sector has announced over $1 billion in investment in Tulsa in just the last three years. These things do not happen if the fundamentals of your local economy are not strong. And we continue to work with businesses, even in the midst of a global economic crisis, who want to invest in Tulsa. As announced earlier this week, and in true Tulsa fashion, many of the best private sector minds in Tulsa have committed their time and expertise to serve on an economic recovery advisory committee that will help guide us through this near-term difficulty and allow us to merge even stronger on the other side. The long-term picture for our city remains very bright. We must pursue a responsible course in the near term to get there. The budget presented today seeks to do just that. We'd like to thank staff in the city council office and the mayor's office, and especially in our finance department team for their work on this budget. They ended up having to do a year's worth of work in about six weeks as we adjusted to the current economic environment. And I'm very grateful for their commitment to developing this budget proposal. I look forward to answering any questions you have and working with you in consideration of this proposal over the weeks and months ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.